two o'clock, and I call to order the meeting of the Code Enforcement Board for the City of Tarpon Springs for the 11th of April, 2013. Uh, all rise, and uh, some will open us in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we seek blessings on the task before us. Bless our efforts with clear insight, our deliberations with wisdom, our work with clarity and accuracy, and our decisions with impartiality. We pray that our work this afternoon will find favor in your sight. Amen. Please turn to the flag for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Bobby, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Canasota? Here. Casey? Here. Mr. Kramer? Mr. Bessie? Mr. Archer? Here. Mr. DeMasa? Here. Mr. Um, Solinsky? Here. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and call them forward. That would be fine to fill the vacant spot. Okay, so we're not, okay, go ahead. Sure. We'll go ahead and take roll call first. Mr. Plunkett? Yes. Mrs. Staff? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, would you like to uh, join the board today? Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Annie. Welcome. It is the intention of this board to promote, protect, and improve the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of Tarpon Springs by providing an equitable, effective, and inexpensive method of enforcing various codes within the city of Tarpon Springs. Any aggrieved party may appeal a final administrative order of this board to the circuit court. Such an appeal may be filed within 30 days of the execution of the order to be appealed. Florida Statute 286.0105 requires any party appealing a decision of this board to have a record of the proceedings to support such an appeal. The procedure of this board follows with each case on its agenda is as follows. First, the city presents its witnesses and exhibits, after which the violator is able to ask the city's witnesses any specific questions regarding their testimony. Secondly, the violator is allowed to make a presentation and present any evidence or documents. Then the city can question the violator's witnesses. After both rounds of testimony, both on the part of the city and on the part of the violator, each party is asked to give a closing statement, first by the city, then by the violator. After those three steps are taken, this board then closes the public hearing portion of the case to discuss it and take appropriate action. Before we begin the public hearings, we will have all potential witnesses stand up and be sworn in by the secretary of the board. Can you raise your right hand, please? Please, please. Yes, And now please turn off or silence all of your cell phones. And we're going to proceed to uh, agenda item number one. Uh, this is 160 Reed Street. Is there anybody in the audience for 160 Reed Street? If I could please have you come over and uh, into the microphone, please state your name and address for the records. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Andrew Beckel, representing the uh, Beckel Trust. Okay, Mr. Beckel, and what is your address? Uh, 123 Reed Street. Okay, thank you. All right, and Cindy? My name is Cindy Sanner. I'm the Code Enforcement Inspector for the City of Tarpon Springs. This is case 11-2000010. The property address is 160 Reed Street, and the property owners of record are Richard J. and Ellen R. Beckel. 
I'm presenting this case for Anthony Mastraccio, who is unable to be here today. This is his case. On February 13th of 2011, Anthony Mastraccio received a complaint of unsafe conditions at this location. A letter was sent certified mail to the property owners advising them that there were numerous code violations on the property and gave them a compliance deadline of April 6th, 2011. The property was in violation of codes 6-1, and if you look at your uh, case notes, it's quite a long laundry list of, of codes. Um, Attorney Trust, do I need to read every single code into the record? Okay. Yeah, we, uh, we have some pictures also for the uh, uh, property owners to accept. The property was in violation of City Code 6-1, Building Code Adopted, International Property Maintenance Code 2006 edition as adopted by the 2007 Florida Building Code. And all of these are the International Property Management Code, Section 104.5, Unsafe Buildings. Maintenance section. Code. Maintenance Code, not Management Code. Oh, maintenance, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, section 304.1, General Exterior Structure. Section 304.2, Protective Treatment. Section 304.4, Structure Members. Section 304.6, Exterior Walls. Section 304.7, Roof and Drainage. Section 304.8, Decorative Features. Section 304.10, Stair Decks and Balconies. Section 304.12, Handrails and Guardrails. Section 304.13, Window and Door Frames. Section 304.13.1, Glazing. Section 304.13.2, Openable Windows. Section 304.15, Doors. Section 305.1, General Interior Structure. Section 305.2, Structural Members. Section 305.3, Interior Surfaces. Section 305.4, stair and, Stairs and Walk Surfaces. Section 305.5, Handrails and Guards. Section 305.6, Interior Doors. Section 301, 307.1, Accumulation of Rubbish or Garbage. Section 308.1, Infestation. Section 504.1, General Plumbing. Section 505.1, General Water Systems. Section 603.1, Mechanical Systems. And Section 605.1, Electrical Equipment Installation. The owners initially worked with Anthony, but ceased contact with him after three months. A notice of violation was issued on October 17th of 2011, and a notice of hearing was sent via first-class mail and certified return receipt on November 29th of 2011. The case was deferred in order to allow time for the property owner to obtain approval from the Historic Preservation Board. The case was deferred to the September 13th, 2012 Code Enforcement Board hearing then deferred again to the December 13th, 2012 Code Enforcement Board hearing, and then once again to the April 11th, 2013 Code Board hearing. The property went before the Historic Preservation Board in February of 2013, and they determined that the structure could be demolished, but the front wall must remain standing. The property owners have hired an architect and an engineer to work uh, with the building. The property was posted on March 28th of 2013, and to come into compliance, the property owners must apply for and obtain building permits to correct all of the violations or to demolish the property, excluding the front wall. Anthony is recommending a compliance deadline of October 14th of 2013 or a daily fine thereafter of $100 a day. Does the board have any questions for Cindy at this time for the city? Could you repeat what your recommendation was? Please? I can't hear you, Wanda. What? Could you repeat what your recommendation was? I was, I didn't get it. Um, a compliance deadline of October 14th of 2013, and, and a daily fine thereafter of $100 a day. Thank you. I thought you were going to ask to repeat the code. <laughs> yeah, could you do that? I, I am not going Mr. to repeat Chairman. the codes. <laughs> Al, um, Cindy, what I don't understand here is this has been. Notif notification of violation several times, and yet we have October 14th, 2013. Now, a daily fine 100. From what date? October 14th. Well, it would start October 14th if the property is. So we're giving it. We're giving them another you're extension. You're giving them six months 
to obtain a permit to either bring the property to current code or to demolish it with the exception of the exterior wall. It's so not an extension wall. now. But what I don't understand, if this was issued on October 17, 2011, why do they have two years? Anthony was trying to work with them. Who's Anthony? And Anthony is the building inspector. Oh, okay. This is his case. Um, he was trying to work with them and kept deferring it because of uh, issues would come up. Um, but he said that, you know, enough time has gone, down, gone by, it needs to come to code for it now. Uh, what does it look like? I mean, what are the neighbors looking at? We got a, a picture. Yeah, the oh. pictures are coming around. Okay. But it is in a neighborhood, so he's got people that... It's a church. Um, it's at the corner of Canal and Reed Street, right off of uh, Spring Boulevard. When you see the pictures, you'll recognize it. Okay. Uh, again, Cindy, Section 307.1, 308.1. The infestation and the accumulation of rubbish, rubbish or garbage, is that still in effect? Yes, all of it is. Because it would seem to me the infestation could lead to other properties if there are other properties close to it. Because bugs don't, you know, if that's what we're talking about. Well, we'd have to break it into separate, um, we'd have to break this thing down. And this is taking care of everything by October. It's lenient to take care of this whole thing because it's not reasonable to expect this to be remedied in the course of a month. No, to I, demolish a building. I, well, it's not, not a course of a month, Mr. Chairman. It's, it's, it's two Anthony, years. Anthony, uh, if the property were going to be brought to code, Anthony estimates it would take at least a year to do that um, after they obtain a permit. Um, again, it's a matter of, you know, the Historic Preservation Board. Um, is allowing them to demolish the structure, excluding the front wall. So, you know, it's a decision that the property owner has to make, um, but either one or two of the, the solution has to be done, and a permit has to be obtained for either one. But again, it's the infestation and the accumulation of rubbish or garbage. That it's interior, from what I understand, it's interior and... Um, well, the bugs have got to get there somehow. Right. Well, there's, you know, I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot of details or personal knowledge of this because, like I said, it's Anthony's case, and, and Anthony has been working to try to get this resolved, and nothing's happened. So it's, it's now before you for a determination. Uh, does the city have any witnesses? No. No? Okay. Um, Mr. Beckel, if um, you would please uh, give us your opening statement and um, speak into the microphone. Thank you, sir. Certainly. Um, well, we have been pursuing this project for the, over the course of since the initial violation, and actually a little before that, we started investigating our options as to what to do with the church building. And um, to say that nothing has been happening is actually a misrepresentation of all the work that's gone into this. I personally have sunk over 500 hours into pursuing this project, trying to line up financing and design work. Um, we're in phase three of the architectural design work, and um, that involved significant funding, um, all, all from the, the state itself. <coughs> and um, we're happy that the, and thrilled that the Heritage Preservation Board approved our project back in February, and we're currently um, vetting structural engineers to ensure that the um, it's actually a strategic um, demolition and shoring of the bell tower and the facade, and then a reconstruction for a um, environmentally friendly uh, building in its footprint. Um, that's going to be a private residence. And so um, we're currently talking with banks to ensure that the, the project is funded through the entire um, construction. <clears throat> and as, what, as, as you probably well all know, that banks aren't that easy to work with anymore. And uh, yeah. um, so we're confident that we'll get there. Um, we're also looking into who's going to do the demo at this point. So um, right now we're, the critical steps are enlisting a structural engineer 
and um, getting their design and then identifying a demolition company to do the, the partial demo and then the reconstruction will will be slated to begin very quickly after that. And actually the building construction itself, it should look like a finished building within probably three months of, of groundbreaking because of the um, approach being pursued, which is called SIP structural insulated panels. My wife and I have been looking forward to that since the late 90s. So excited to get that project underway. Does the board have any um, questions? You say it's going to be a private residence? Yes. That's correct. The entire building will not be reconstructed. It will actually be about two-thirds of the existing footprint will be reconstructed, attached directly behind um, the, the facade and bell tower. There, if you notice, if you study the building, there's a discontinuity between um, the first two-thirds of the building footprint and the rear one-third. The rear one-third having a flat roof and the, the, the main part of the church um, structure having a gabled roof. It's the section that has the gabled roof that will be reconstructed. The remaining one-third will not be reconstructed. It's cost prohibitive and it is not going to be as appealing as far as the property goes. It'll be nicer to have the yard. Okay. I'm sure engineers have said that it is feasible to keep the bell tower and the facade of the front without, when you start demolition. A shoring plan will be developed. That's the first phase. Uh, a shoring plan that is um, integral to the, the planned construction so that there isn't much waste of, of materials and time. So that is what we're currently pursuing. That's the thrust of our effort right now is going towards um, getting that structural um, shoring plan in place. So to answer your question, shoring plan, then demo, so that the facade and bell tower preserved. Mr. Beckroni, <clears throat> you mentioned that it's in phase three. Yes. What does that mean? That is detailed drawings of the interior. And, and, and you said that's in process? We're, we currently funded the phase three design development. So, so it's being drawn right now? Yes, phases one and two are complete. So there are complete visions of the floor plan and um, the exterior treatments of the building. Those when, are, when will phase three be finished? Phase three of the design work should be done in the next six to eight weeks. Okay. What happened as you stopped working with the city about three months we, ago? We never stopped. We've been meeting with Renee and um, and, and her colleagues um, continuously and attending the Heritage Preservation Board. I don't, I'm not exactly sure why that comment isn't there. That I've also been talking. The comment talk was placed in there by Anthony Mastraccio because... Um, That's the first I've heard of that. Well, I spoke to him this morning, and it's also in the case notes that after about three months of, of you know working, you failed to contact him. And uh, I've been le I've been leaving him messages routinely and okay. um, well, it's, talking it's to him. So, said, she I, said, so okay. at this okay. point, that's that's really leaving messages specifically for Anthony or for the city. He asking questions about as deferrals came up or as as hearings came up. Inter interfacing with him. I mean, someone had to initiate the deferrals. I mean, clearly I was talking to him about progress that we were making. But and, I mean, so, really and those deferrals sure. were based on the fact that we were making progress and we're self-funding and we're, you know, we're operating in a bootstrap manner. I have a couple of questions, if I might. Uh, the first of which, phase three sounds fine if, if we only have three phases, but how many phases is it going to take? That's it, phase three. And phase three of, of architectural design is going to be is, is detailed interior cross sections. So where the built-in bookshelves are going to go, what the countertops are going to look like, the structure is very well defined, and th those materials are on file with the city. Okay, I'm more concerned not with how your project's going to uh, the details of your project, except when is it going to be in compliance. Because we're, con I'm not necessarily, I don't know that the other board members are concerned with, with what you're going to put in there, but we have all of these uh, alleged violations of codes listed, right. uh, garbage, infestation, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we have, uh, uh, according to the inspector, a compliance date recommended of October 14, 2013. What's the chances it's going to be done by then? The existing building will not exist by that date. So it will be in compliance by being partially demoed in, in some state of reconstruction by then. What was your comment, Cindy? 
Anthony is requesting a compliance date for them to apply for and obtain their permits only. The work is not expected to be done within a six month time frame. Okay, but this gentleman's just indicated that it will be. Well, no, it will be an active construction site. Yeah. Oh, an active construction. And then it's in compliance. Once the approval of the, of the construction project is in place, my understanding from various sources in the city is that this all goes out the window. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. <clears throat> Pretty complicated job too. I imagine it will take a while for the drawings to get approved in the city to give them that. That's a beautiful structure. Are there any more questions from the board? Do you have any witnesses that you would like to call forward, or do you have any questions of the city or us? Um, no, I just thank the city for its continued patience, and we okay. you should feel confident that we are, we've been working. I've personally sunk. I'm an engineer. I've sunk over 500 hours of my own time in, in this pursuit, and um, I think that's fairly significant. And uh, we are self-funded. Um, to my understanding, there are no grants or any other types of um, uh, preferable funding sources that we've been able to identify. We've been uh, proactive in all those senses. So we're moving at a pace that is um, affordable to us and self-funded will not in uh, will not conflict with bringing the building into compliance so you have the funding to bring the building into compliance in the reconstruction certainly yeah okay so that and that's what we're working on <clears throat> in fact after this meeting my father and I are going to a bank to align so that just to have enough funding to, to get everything done basically okay <clears throat> and so this has been a long road and we've recently been talking to banks for well about a year now Okay. And uh, we've tried different approaches, and so now we're into home equity line uh, approach. So, Cindy, Which, do you have a closing statement? No, I do not. Mr. Becker, would you like to make a closing statement? Just, uh, you know, we appreciate your patience. We know that this has been an eyesore for some time. Um, the building has um, issues. It will be, in the near future, a beautiful uh, new building that uh, will make our city very proud. Nice. Okay, I'm going to close the public um, hearing portion of this meeting and open it to the board for a motion. Somebody who has a cough drop to list all the um, code violations can make the motion. Oh, I don't want it. Oh, no, <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I'll make the motion. All right. Thank you, Carl. Uh, I move based on the testimony, evidence, facts presented in law that at the time of the alleged violations, uh, Section 6-1, Building Code Adopted, City Code, uh, uh, International Property Maintenance Code 2006, addition as adopted by the 2007 Florida Building Code. Section 104.5, Unsafe Buildings or Systems. Section 304.1, General Exterior of Structure. Section 304.2, Protective Treatment. Section 304.4, Structure Members Exterior. Section 304.6, Exterior Walls, Exterior Structure. Section 304.7, Roof and Drainage. Section 304.8, Decorative Features. Section 304. Point ten stairs slash deck slash balcony section three oh four point twelve handrails and guardrails section three oh four point thirteen window and door frames section three oh four point thirteen point one glazing section three oh four point thirteen point two openable windows section three oh four point one five doors section three oh five point one General Interior Structure, Section 305.2, Structural Members, Section 305.3, Interior Surfaces, Section 305.4, Stairways and Walk Surfaces, Section 305.5, Handrails and Guards, Section 305.6, Interior Doors, Section 307.1, Accumulation of Rubbage or Garbage, Section 308.1, Infestation, Section 504.1, General Plumbing, Section 505.1, General Water Systems, Section 603.1, Mechanical six, uh, Systems, and Section 605.1, Electrical 
uh, equipment installed. Second. Oh, wait, I'm okay. sorry. Take that back. Of the code of uh, ordinances of the city of Tarpon Springs, we're enforced. The respondent has until October 14, 2013, to come into compliance with the code uh, sections or a fine of $100 per day shall be imposed for each day thereafter that respondent remains in violation of the said code sections. Second. Thank you. Um, board discussion? Yeah, I do. <clears throat> I'm going to vote against the amendment the way it was presented, Mr. Chairman, only because of Section 307.1, 308.1. It would seem to me that if we go until October 14th, 2013, we're allowing uh, the company that owns this to go until that date without cleaning up the rubbish or <clears throat> without clearing the infestation. It would seem to me that if we took those two, at least those two out, and gave them just a short period of time to, if nothing else, get a, an exterminator to come in and get rid of the exter uh, to get rid of the infestation. I know that if I lived near it, I would be very upset because if all of a sudden this infestation, which I assume, and maybe Cindy can correct me on this, but which I assume uh, has to do with little critters running around, and it doesn't mean just bugs, but it could also be other kinds of vermin that might be there. Uh, it doesn't state what kind of infestation. So I uh, would like to see at least somebody coming like a, a uh, pest guard or somebody like that uh, coming at least once a month to make sure there was no infestation and that the so-called accumulation of rubbish or garbage be done almost on a weekly basis with a dumpster outside putting it in and having it uh, cleaned up just to get rid of the so-called nuisance. But that would be that would be my objection to this. I'd like to ask the, uh, the chairman if if we can modify the. Uh, yes, we can. Well, we have motion. to we have to we have to first of all vote on this motion, right? No. Before it's modified. No. If um, if the maker of the motion wants to amend his motion, he has that right to make uh, yes, make the amendment. I would like at this time then to amend the, the motion that I just presented based on the. Uh, the uh, clearly presented uh, well-founded argument of uh, one of the other members of the board and what I'd like to do one thing I'd like to say first Tom uh, I pass by the building every day and I can see where a lot of um, progress has been made my wife and I have been intently um, curious as to what would happen with that building hoping that somehow it might be saved um, but I can tell progress has been made and it is going to be a personal residence I'm not questioning the progress, Mr. Chairman, but I think that the point that our colleague has brought up is a very valid point. You happen to be passing that particular mm -hmm. structure. If you were living next to it, perhaps you'd have more concern uh, regarding the infestation and 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 uh, the uh, the other uh, the other point. So uh, I, I suppose that they'd be out here if they had a lot of concern. You would think they'd be out here to re represent themselves, but. I'm not going to argue. In fact, um, if you amend, I'll probably um, go you do as You'll have to do as your conscience tells you, uh, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Uh, but I think that the point that was brought up uh, by the gentleman at the other end of the table, and I'm sure. sure, sir, I don't know your name, but pal. Okay. I, I, I think it was a point that, that I had some concern about, too, and I'm glad that you yeah, raised it. Yeah, you brought it up, as a matter of fact. What, what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, modify my... Uh, my motion and, and indicate a, a shorter time period just for those two items, yeah. and and uh, that would be. What I'd like to do, is, uh, and correct me if, uh, if if it needs to be, is to indicate that in regards to two of the sections which I enumerated, section 307.1 accumulation of rubbish or garbage, and section 308.1 infestation that uh, 
the compliance there, uh, the recommended compliance would be uh, uh, within 60 days of today's date. So we need a date, sir? Yes. Um, well, let me look at a calendar very quickly, sir. And the 11th of April? Let's make it uh, uh, June 24th. That's a little bit longer. So. And that's for those two items uh, uh, alone. And I would suggest uh, uh, perhaps a, 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 a token uh, penalty of uh, $25 a day thereafter if they're not in compliance on those two sections. And I think that's a reasonable uh, motion. Do we have a uh, second? I second that. Okay, board discussion. The one hiccup that I can see is uh, I don't know how this works in a demolition, but accumulation of rubbish and garbage in a demolition is going to be Well, if they had a dumpster. Massive. Well, look, they can't start demolition until they get permits, and, and so why pay for a dumpster for six months? Oh, no, no. Well, they don't have to get a dumpster right now. I'm just addressing what yeah. the chairman talked about. Without a permit, they don't, they can't. You know, so well, they don't, the need garbage, a, they don't need a permit to put, clean up the garbage right, on the invitation. The amount of garbage that they're probably talking about is what you put on the roadside every Tuesday, Monday, and Thursday. And it's, well, I don't I, see the sense of I, I having no, to bring in a dumpster until October. Just because I have no information to, to, to support that one. Yeah, we are limited on the information. I mean, you've got a very good point, Alan. I'm glad that you brought it up. I just, breaking these things off are going to be a little tough, but... Um, any other uh, board discussion? I would, I, again, I, and, I, and I don't mean to be a Peter on this, but uh, those two sections, if, if the amendment could say being done on a monthly basis, uh, you're only asking, you know, uh, you can't do that. A, you the only thing you can state. do is, is that you can establish a compliance date. Once it's in compliance, it's no longer a violation. Therefore, we cannot make the property owner do anything further. If okay. In compliance, he'd have to be recited again, and you'd start a new case. Okay. So, compliance on June 24th, then that is a non-issue any longer. If they're in compliance by then, then okay. they only have to worry about the other one by October 14th. Okay. Yeah, I think the, the point might... You know, I, I just want to say, I have nothing against these people, and I hope that their project is a complete success. But, but also, I can under, you know, the point was made that there are some problems here that have gone on for a long time. And, and you know, I, I understand that there, there's, you're, you're trying to do your best, but yet I'm trying to also think what, how I would feel if I lived next door hmm. or if I lived in that area, what, I would, what my concerns would be. And that's why, you know, I think we've got to get off the dime here. And, and I think that we've given a, a lot of time. I think it's a, a good proposal as far as how long uh, of a compliance date. It's all the way to October 14th of 2013. But there are a couple of immediate issues which I think also can be taken care of. I had a guy come out to uh, the, the bug man. I had the exterminators come out to my house. And, and you know, they, they can clean up a project pretty quick. They okay. can. And at not a, too great of an expense. And I passed that property myself, Mr. Chairman, and I, and I see how big it is, and whether it's rats or mice or, or whatever the 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 the, uh, the uh, infestation is. You know, hopefully they'd be able to take care of it. They, they've got a lot of money invested in it right now. So if nothing else, uh, I, I don't think it would take that much more to protect their situation and 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 be able to to, to go on with it. So. It's not because uh, I don't want to see you be successful, but I also think that there should, we have to also concern ourselves with others. Any other board discussion? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Sure. Maybe I don't really understand. Uh, <clears throat> I heard the property owner said that um, he had a plan, and uh, I'm not sure exactly when he's going to begin and me when he said he had a plan, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, these courts are still going to be there October 14th, am I? Well, the one thing that he did make clear is the uh, necessary parts of the building would be raised within three months, yes. and in three months it will be obvious that it's a construction site and rather clean. And so right. And your, uh, the motion, I believe, is to extend 
two additional months to clean up the two codes? Well, not two additional months. Um, what it would be, the two codes would have 60 days from today, uh, actually June 24th, mm -hmm. to, um, to um, take care of the accumulation of rubbish or garbage and the infestation, and then to complete the rest of it, which would be the necessary permits and whatnot right. that um, the city made us um, uh, um, aware of. That would be until October 14th of 2013. So this motion has two different um, dates of compliance. The first date, June 24th, for the infestation and garbage, and the second date for the uh, permit, for all the other things that you see on there. Oh, yeah, I understand. The, the public portion is closed. I'm sorry. Uh, we, we're, we can't have any more. garbage. What's Pardon? falling down is plaster from the roof leak. Yeah, oh, but, but again, we're, we're now at the... Uh, oh, all right. I, I just... I think it's important that it's, it's not garbage that's down there. It's fallen plaster. Well, then you wouldn't have to worry about it, right? Well, and I, and and I would love to know what the infestation is. But again, we, we, can't, we can't reopen the public portion of this. Um, but my concern was, um, again, uh, being a construction zone, there's going to be a lot of garbage, and this might be a, a tough road to hoe. But, um, but anyway. Well, we think that that anybody that inspected it on the part of the city would be reasonable and may we can only go by what we hear and what we what we have before us Mr. Chairman if it says garbage it doesn't say plaster but I would assume that our inspector who unfortunately isn't here today okay would be able to, to on site determine whether it's garbage that has to, that may or may not have been cleaned up or it's it's well, I don't think you're going to see it inside the building. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming this accumulation must be exterior. Because it's not like they look with binoculars inside the building and say, hey, there's garbage in the house. No, but I, I, Otherwise, I, my garage would get nailed. <laughs> right, I understand. But uh, again, I'm thinking that can't we depend on the, the, the fact that our inspector would be reasonable in determining whether uh, I'm, you know, I'm it was in violation or not? Inspectors, yeah. The thing is, you know, did Anthony come up with these um, violations two years ago? And um, when he finally decided to bring a case, uh, so was the garbage that was there two years ago, uh, banana peels left by the owners, and, you know, it's just like... Well, obviously without everything... Anthony here, I mean, are we talking about a roach or a rat, right. you know? A yeah. roach. I have roaches. I just get the stuff out once a month and they're gone. But, but, but we don't know. You know we don't know here. without Anthony here. And you know, so I'm okay with this um, 30, 60 days for these two things. But without Anthony here, I don't think we can put our finger on exactly garbage or rubbish. And, you know, they're saying plaster's falling. Well, plaster falling, again, that's not going to be exterior. So. And the uh, picture, the outside of the building looked great. I wouldn't mind them next to me. You know, it's a beautiful building. It looks like they're going to live in a little castle. Um, Al, do you have something else? I saw you wanted to say something. No, no, I'm no. fine. I, I agree. I, okay. No, I agree with the gentleman. Any other board discussion? Now, Bobby, how about a roll call vote? This is Dan. Can we get a reading of what we're voting on, please? With all the things. <laughs> No, 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 we don't need all those. Just, <laughs> just the exception. Okay, the two, well, exceptions. The two um, <clears throat> sections, 307.1 um, and 308.1, has a um, compliance date of June 24, 2013, a fine amount of um, $25 per day. The rest of the um, citation or section is October 14, 2013, with $100 per day fine. I mean, if you'd proceed with the first roll call vote, please. This is Deb. Yes. Mr. Plunkett. Yes. Mr. Swalinski. Yes. Mr. Um, Demasis. Yes. Mrs. Archer. No. Mrs. Vacacy. Yes. Mr. Sanchez. No. Okay, the motion carries, and um, good luck with your project. Thank you. And we will proceed now to... The uh, second item on our agenda, please. And is there anybody in the audience for uh, 1617 Overlook Drive? 
Okay. And um, I'm going to have you go ahead and um, take a seat and please state into the uh, microphone your name and address. Okay, my name is, good afternoon. My name is Khalid Assad, 1617 Overlock Drive. Okay, and your last name, Assad? Yes. Mr. Assad, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Haig. My name is Richard Haig, uh, Senior Engineering Technician in City Arborist. I'm also an ISA Certified Arborist. Uh, this is case number 12-8000970, 1617 Overlook Drive. It's a violation of the City's Tree Protection Ordinance, uh, Section 13304 of the Land Development Code, permit required. Uh, the violation is for removing a protected tree without an approved tree removal permit. Uh, the, uh, the initial inspection was 11-28-2012. Uh, notice of violation was sent out January 2nd, 2013. Uh, it was uh, certified, uh, signed, and returned to the city. A notice of hearing was sent out March 15th, 2013, uh, it was sent out certified uh, March 20th uh, and returned signed. The property was posted on March 28th, 2013, uh, notifying uh, that the hearing was going to be held today. Um, uh, this uh, violation came to my attention uh, through the Code Enforcement Department who had seen uh, some tree cutting activity. Uh, I did go out to the site and I did confirm that a tree had recently been cut down. I took photographs and I do have evidence uh, including the photographs of the, the stump that remains and I also have a uh, aerial photograph and a uh, Google Earth that shows what the tree was like before it was cut and I'd like to present that into evidence. Does the board have any questions for the city, Mr. Hay? Just so I understand, this was an unauthorized, unauthorized cutting down of a tree before it got approval through you and your office? That is correct. Mr. Hay, do you have any witnesses for the city? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you. Do they have to replace the tree? No. As a violation, they, they are required to pay four times the replacement and permit fee, which... Uh, in the notice of hearing, uh, it describes what has to be done to come into compliance. Uh, if you do find the property owner in violation, uh, they would have to pay four times the normal permit and replacement fee, the normal fee would be $385, uh, four times that fee would be uh, a fee of $1,540. That's the replacement. What about the permit price? Well, that includes the permit price. It's oh, okay. Four times the $25 permit fee and the replacement cost of $20 per diameter inch, uh, and, and the two added together is $1,540. I assume the tree wasn't dead or dying. No, I did, I did not see it on the day that it was cut. I do have an aerial photo that shows the tree in living condition, and uh, the violation would apply whether the tree was dead or alive. You still need a permit for a dead tree if it's a protected species. I'm sorry, Mr. Hager, I didn't hear you. Uh, you would need a permit to remove a tree, even if it was dead, if it is a protected species. Right. Right. But I'm talking, yeah, but, but not replacement. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And you said that it does not need to be replaced, but that the fine would need to be paid. Um, now, one thing we, we do, we just to let you know, when you find in violation or not in violation, there's nothing that we can do to reduce this fine. Is that correct? No. That is correct. Okay. All right. 
With uh, no further questions, uh, Mr. Assad, would you like to make an opening statement, please? Okay. Uh, when I bought this house, I found the tree light make a lot of crack in the house and in the entries. And I found my people, they have company doing tree and uh, they say green leaf company and they did, uh, I told them I want to cut this tree because make damage for this house. They told me we are responsible for everything and they charged me like $700 and I told them the permit, they told me we take care about everything. He said, yeah, the guy, he cut it for me, he told me he, he, he knows everything, he will take care about everything and he told me you are certified, we do that kind of work. So I left it for them because they know this, they know everything better than me. Then they cut that tree. And I have no idea what they have to do because I know I, I give it, people, they are certified, they have to do the work. They should be not cut the tree if they, know, if they don't have the permission or something, something like that. So later on I see that letter come from the city about that stuff. And I came here like, I don't know, I know I will come, I go to the city. I, I have no idea that I have to go to get permit for that. Because the guy told me you are responsible for everything. Okay, uh, Mr. Assad, do you have any witnesses that you would like to come forward? No, I have my son, but he is in the school. He was okay. in the academy. He was in, uh, and I have his, the guy called the, the uh, his card. He gave it to me after he got the tree, and I paid him cash. Mm -hmm. Board, do you have any questions? For I really couldn't understand what he was saying. So well, basically, anything. what you're saying is you had a uh, tree co uh, a company come by and offer to cut the tree down. And they claim to have had, um, they claim that they would take care of the necessary permits. Yes. Yeah. Jerry, did you have a? Yes, I have a couple questions for you, yes. sir. One, what kind of damage was this tree causing your property? Is all the concrete. Okay, so the roofs were digging up the concrete. And the entrance also, like the ceramic entrance in the door, almost like crack up. And one time, I found some leaves going up, going inside my house. Hmm. Okay. And then my other question is, I understand you uh, hired Green Leaf Tree Trimmer? Yes, I have his card. His name Josh Green, and I have his phone number here. And he took, told you or left you under the impression that he was going to cover all the bases he told me as far as permits, and we had a plan to do one or whatever. He told me to take care of everything. That's what he told me. We are responsible. I am certified. I do my work. Okay. And then from that time when you talked to him, how long was it before they actually came and cut the tree down? Almost like uh, one month. One month. So that was plenty of time to notify the city and get yeah. the pro proper documentation, sir? Oh, yes. Yes. So... Yeah, well, unfortunately, what, what happens here is we have a lot of folks that go door to door trying to solicit business, and um, I, I don't know how else to um, refer to them, but they are, um, I, I consider them predators if they are not property licensed, and unfortunately, you being the owner of the property are the one responsible for what happens, whether it has been done properly or not, ultimately you are the one responsible, um, even if they say on their good word. Um, and uh, uh, we will see this happen again and again. Um, I, I see folks all the time coming through offering to do work, but having to verify a license takes time and also verifying a permit would take time. But um, one thing is fail safe and that is when a permit is in your hands and that's what they should have done uh, is placed a permit in your hands. Um, I had to have a, a tree removed and um, I, I, I can't remember. I think you guys gave me the permit right there on the spot. I think I can't remember but um, well, they give you to hang out the yeah but I, I still even have the permit but um, yeah, you're in, you're in a difficult position 
because this person obviously misrepresented his company to you, and your remedy would be to go through him, but uh, I don't know yet, Jerry. Uh, Mr. Uh, did you contact this company, or was it somebody just walking down the street saying, we're in the neighborhood and your tree needs trimming or cut down? No, what happened, like, I saw them somewhere, and they gave me a call. They told me our company for cut tree, and I, I gave it his call. Then no. I called them, they come do it. Is it possible if I see the car to yes. see if there's a licensing number or if they're bonded or certified, please? Okay, but does no, that, I don't see that, that doesn't make any difference. No. Well, I just want to make sure that, sir, you're not you're not going to get that card back if it's going to be tendered into evidence. So, do you have a problem with that? Okay, the city will need to keep that then. Do you have another card? We can make a photocopy if you need a photocopy of it. Okay. But having said that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, whether he's properly licensed or bonded or whatever, if the tree company did not get the necessary permit, the violator is still the owner of the property. That is correct. So the city has no uh, recourse through the tree company, only through the violator. But the violator may have recourse through the tree company, maybe. Yes, he could file suit in county court to collect his fifteen hundred and forty dollars necessary to get the permit, probably. Yeah, maybe if once in a while somebody would sue these companies. It would be nice. That wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. Okay. Um, no more questions for Mr. Assad. Yeah, just pass yeah, it down just to pass everybody down. can read it. Just like any other piece of evidence. Mr. Haig, do you have any closing statement that you would like to make for the city? Uh, only that the uh, the aerial photos that I saw uh, showed that it was a tree in very good condition. A full canopy, I didn't see any sign of decay. And when I was on the site, I did not notice any uh, property damage, uh, such as cracking of the driveway, that could be associated with the tree. That's all. Okay. Can I ask what particular type of tree was it? A live oak. A live oak. Okay, and Mr. Assad, would you like to make a closing statement, please? Yeah, the tree, if uh, he says no, and not speak into the mic. Okay. The if you, if I can bring you some picture of the tree, is damaged a lot of interest, interest in my house. You can see it. The tree is like, uh, it's damaged most interest inside my house. And I found some plants coming from the tree, roots coming from the tree inside my house with, with some plants from the tree inside my house. Or could, or could. Well, I, I, you know, with the damage possibly to the uh, concrete and maybe to your foundation, I can see the urgency to remove the tree, but it's not the damage that the city is concerned with. It's the lack of a permit. Um, and, you know, with the damage, it, it, they would have come out and they would have taken a look at that and desired a permit or whatever. But, again, the lack of a permit is what we're discussing here and now. And, um, and uh, again, um, determining the need of taking down the tree because of damages was causing um, is, is not the place here. Okay. It was taken down without a permit, and that's a violation of our okay. city ordinance. I don't know. Yeah, I can't say anything. It's up to you. I, I thought I, everybody like that company, say what I am doing my business. I am yeah. responsible for what I am doing. So some people, I don't know, somebody like don't say the truth. People have company like thin calls, big calls, and I don't know they, they do that. You know, it's like. That's an awful professional card. Very misleading. Bobby, um, when you receive it, will you put that card into evidence, please? Once Annie hands it to you. Okay, any other statement, Mr. Assad? Okay, and then at this point, I am going to close the public portion of this testimony and open it up to the board for a motion. I move based on the testimony, evidence, facts, presented in law that at the time of the alleged violation of section 133.04 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Chatham Springs was enforced. The respondent has until um, 
the 14th of June to come into compliance with the code section or a fine of $50 per day shall be imposed for each day thereafter respondent remains in violation of the said code section. I'm confused. I thought he had to pay the 1540 That's how he's going to have to come into compliance. He has to get a permit. He really shouldn't be concerned about what he has to do to get the permit. It would be doing any other permit situation. It's just in this situation, Mr. Haig has told you to get the permit, it's going to cost him $1,540 instead of the normal permit fee, which is going to be a little bit more. So he's going to have to pay that to come into compliance, and once he comes into compliance, if he does it before June 14th, there would be no other money that would be due. Um, and if he doesn't do it, then the, then the daily fine would begin to run. So what was the daily fine again? $14th of June. Pardon? Wanda said 14th of June. That's right. That's what I said. Flag day. Pardon? Oh, flag day. I, and that's the reason, I, you know, you can get a tree permit overnight, but yeah. because there's that kind of, uh, okay, I just didn't understand. you know, I, I just second. like to give him a couple of months to get his money together. Do we, do we have a second for a second? second. Okay. And now, if you want more discussion, so, um, Becky, do you understand it now? And she, yeah. made, she made the second, by the way. Oh, good. Didn't oh, I didn't hear it. Okay, I'm sorry. Thanks. Any other board discussion? Um, Mr. Chairman, am I to understand he can get a permit at this time? It's just going to be four times more than it would have been. Oh. It's going to be um, $1,540 to get a permit. And he has until June 14th to get that permit. Otherwise, he will then pay the $50 a day fee. That might be misleading. The permit for proper is four times, and that was $100. But the fine, because they took down that tree, yeah. there, yeah. there's okay. money involved with the size of the tree, and that's what gets it up to 15 Okay. And if this passes, then Mr. Assad's only recourse is going to be to sue um, the person who took the tree down. Any other board discussion? Bobby, may we have a roll call, call vote, please? Who's that? Uh, I'll say no. Mr. Plunkett? Yes. Mr. Um, Bolinski? No. Yes. Mrs. Archer? Yes. Mrs. Big Casey? Yes. Mr. Sanchez? Yes. Okay, um, the motion carries. Again, we appreciate the predicament that you're in, but it was a violation to remove the tree without a permit. And at this point, I would seek recourse through that tree company. Um, but at this point, um, uh, it will be a $1,540 fine in which you have until June 14th to pay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Assad. And um, case, the next case on the agenda, 508 Spring Lake Circle. Is there somebody in the uh, – okay, if I could have you please step forward and um, state your name and address into the microphone, please. Uh, John Haas, 508 Spring Lake Circle. Okay, John Haas. Haas. Okay, thank you, Mr. Haas. Yes, sir. Mr. Haig? Okay, again, uh, my name is Richard Haig, uh, City Arborist, Senior Engineering Technician. Uh, this case uh, was brought to my attention from a, an anonymous complainant. Uh, the location is 508 Spring Lake Circle. Uh, it's in a gated community. Uh, townhomes of uh, townhomes of North Lake. Uh, the violation is for is for uh, violation of section 13304, permit required uh, for removing a protected tree without an approved tree removal permit. Uh, the uh, violation came to my attention on December 27th, 2012. Uh, notice of violation was mailed uh, January 2nd, 2013, 
It was returned, uh, certified mail was returned, signed. Notice of hearing uh, was 3-15-2013 by certified mail, which was signed and returned. The property was posted on March 28, 2013, uh, notifying of the hearing date. Uh, this is a case uh, where uh, when I was notified the tree had been removed, I went out to the site. I did find the stump still in place. Uh, I measured the stump, uh, which was a 12-inch diameter. I made a, ju a judgment call, an estimation, that diameter breast height wouldn't have been any uh, less than 8 inches. Uh, so we identified it as an 8-inch diameter trunk. Uh, the tree is similar to trees that are spaced down the, the road, which are live oak. Uh, uh, there are two more trees down the road that have a similar base size. I measured those at uh, diameter breast height, and both of those were exceeded 8-inch diameter, so I am comfortable that 8 inches is, uh, is, is a good number to use. Uh, I do have photographs. Uh, photographs of the stump. I have an aerial photo that shows it had a, at one time had a, a full healthy canopy. And I have a conversation that I had with Mr. Haas uh, to discuss this. Uh, we had our conversation February 2026. 20, and there's a location map. Board, do you have any questions for Mr. Haig for the city? Mr. Haig, do you have any witnesses for the city? No, just myself. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Haas, would you like to make an opening statement? Uh, yeah. Uh, this is not the first home that we've owned in Tarpon Springs, and we had a tree removed over in uh, Forest Ridge, so I'm not I'm not completely ignorant that I didn't know if there was not a law to this. But we complied with that law uh, based on the size of that tree and based on what I knew of a, of a live oak tree. I personally know what a live oak tree can do to a driveway because not only did I have to pay the uh, permit and the removal of that tree and the stump grinding was totaled about $5,000 to remove that tree from that particular driveway. I had to also <clears throat> spend a few weekends removing concrete myself because I couldn't afford to have it done and then having a concrete port. So I have first-hand knowledge of what a live oak tree can do uh, to concrete. First point. Second point is I know what the little acorns can do to a 92-year-old woman. I'm not playing on the sympathy of anybody. I'm stating pure fact. I have a mother-in-law that lives with me. I saw her one day almost break a few parts of her anatomy because of those acorns, and that's when I decided that tree's coming down. It wasn't in haste. I talked to, I think his name is Mike, who's the vice president of our association, uh, or my wife did, and we were told that it's your property. You can basically do what you want to do. And that wasn't good enough for me because I know certain there's regulations about the size of the tree. I didn't run willy-nilly out and hire a tree cutting company to do that. I did make a phone call to a tree cutting company, one of our accounts. And he wasn't 100% sure, but he basically told me trees under 12 inches should not have to have a permit. That's not saying I did right by just saying go ahead and cut the tree down, but that was the reasoning. Okay. So the tree is now gone. The third reason, which is like on a personal basis, a brand new truck set in my driveway with that oak tree making a total mess out of my truck. <clears throat> and if anybody's bought a brand new truck, you know what I'm talking about. You don't want your property messed up. That's why the tree is gone. Okay. Right, wrong, or indifferent, the situation is there, and I did not get a permit. Uh, but I did do some investigating. Uh, my only question that I will raise here, actually two questions is, is all the trees in that development, have they been permitted that are, that are missing? Number one. Number two, and this is where I fall on the mercy of the, the uh, board here, I don't have $420 to lay out 
and that's what I told Mr. Hayden. Uh, I'm not trying to uh, absolve myself of any guilt here. I, I did something that I didn't get a permit for. I know I should have got a permit. I do not have, I cannot write a check today for $420. I will pay the fine because I did to do and, it, and it's just. I'm asking for a little leniency there. But the, one of the questions uh, that I, the main, a lot of, the big question I have here is every tree that's been cut out of that development has it been permitted. <clears throat> and a good lawyer never asks a question that he doesn't know the answer to. I'll say that. Well, I appreciate your comments, but with regard to the other trees, don't have the information. However, the one we're concerned with today is yours. This is my tree. And I, and I do understand your predicament. We had a, uh, a bottle brush and to which my wife was deathly allergic, not yes. to mention the absolute horrid mess that it made. Um, I didn't do much, um, what do you say, uh, investigation. I just called and asked the city. They said, well, we'll come out, $30 permit, and um, we'll decide. So I was at their mercy. They either say yay or nay, right. but right there I wrote a check and she gave me the permit, and then I had the tree removed. But that was the limit of my investigation was that. And um, then I I think I cut it down myself. I can't remember. That was years ago. But nevertheless, it was for similar circumstances. But, but again, the issue here is the lack of permit. Um, if the board decides um, in Mr. in the city's fa favor, the only thing we could do with regard to easing the $420 is extending the amount of time to pay the fine, but we are not at liberty to reduce the, the fine. I understand that. Um, or a fee. I can't remember. It's a fee. Yeah, a fee. We cannot reduce a fee. Uh, Jerry? I have a question for Mr. Hayes. Is it, he was told 12 inches, less than 12 inches, you don't need a permit. Is that true? Uh, not in the city of Tarpon Springs. Okay, because you had stated Grass High it was 8 inches, 8 and a half inches, you assume. But is that true in other locales? Yes, uh, I can answer that. Uh, so Tarpon yep. Springs has, does not have that 12 inch. Right, City of Tarpon Springs, if it's four inches in diameter and above and a protected species, uh, not exempt and not a nuisance tree, mm -hmm. it requires a permit for removal. That's whether it's dead or alive, whether it's a hazard uh, or whether it's in healthy condition. So we have a four inch rule where other areas might have a 12. Well, Hills Hillsborough County, uh, because a lot of it is rural, has a, a higher diameter for removal. Okay, thank you. <laughs> hey, what is the uh, the amount for that for that? Four hundred twenty. No, I'm not at the beginning. If you guess when I got the permit. Uh, if it was done as a normal permit, there would be a twenty-five dollar permit fee, and because of the size of eight inch, it's a cost of ten dollars per diameter inch. That's eighty dollars. It would be a total of one hundred and five dollars. But. Uh, if it's not a violation, they have an option of planting trees as replacement. And what you can do as a homeowner is take out a tree and then plant a similar diameter or, a, you know, trees that would add up to that, and you could plant those trees in a better location. If they're causing property damage, you can plant trees behind your house, uh, maybe at a retention pond uh, with the cooperation of the homeowners association. So you do have options if it's not a violation. Once it becomes a violation, uh, by ordinance, they have to pay the fee, which is four times the normal fee. And then are not required to replace the tree. That is correct. That's not even an option once it's a violation. And at 420, that was your paperwork that was written in the 420, or that was your paperwork? Yes. That you had sent around. Okay. That was to come into compliance. That's what would have to be paid. Okay. And uh, Mr. Haas, did you have any witnesses that you wanted to bring yes, forward? Okay. Are there any more questions of the city or Mr. Haas? I have a question for Mr. Haas. Uh, having heard your testimony and your admission, uh, you indicated that, that 
your concern is to pay the fine. Let me ask you, sir. What would a re what would how much time do you think you might need in order to to, to pay that fine, clear your bill with, and yet not put yourself so far in the hole that we're trying to take food out of you? And I and I appreciate that. I, I won't go into reasons why, but six no, I, months. And I don't need that. But, but what would be a reasonable amount of time? In your six life? months would would do fine, okay. if you all would be so kind. Remember the mother-in-law. <laughs> I do think eight inches is, for the circumference is very reasonable. Um, it sounds like it may have been more, um, closer to nine, maybe nine and a half inches. So I think eight inches is a very reasonable um, diameter. Uh, Mr. Haig, uh, do you have a closing statement that you would like to make for the city? I would like to uh, just agree with Mr. Hostad and. In this subdivision, some of the trees were planted in locations that were not in the best location. The, the developer was required to plant a certain number of trees, and he planted those. And if he had chosen a different species or a smaller type tree or had pruned the tree to keep it small, it would have been appropriate. But in Mr. Haas's condition or situation, I do agree that uh, we may have approved his permit for removal if he came up with a replacement fee and replacement or planted trees in replacement. Uh, just now, as a violation, I have no alternative but to do it as a, as a four times the fee. And you're very comfortable with eight inches? Yes. Okay. And uh, Mr. Haas, would you like to make a closing statement? No, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Then I am going to close the public portion of this. And um, is somebody ready to make a motion? My folder came without it, so I don't have it. I'll make a motion. Uh, I move based on the testimony, evidence, facts presented in law that at the time of the alleged uh, violation, section 133.04 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Tarpon Springs wasn't enforced. Uh, the respondent has until. Let's look at the calendar. If you're looking for six months, it'll be I'm going to look for it, sir. Yep. Uh, let's make it. Uh, October uh, 11th, 2013, to come into compliance with the code section or fine of, and Mr. Uh, do we have a recommended fine? I do not have a recommendation on that. Okay, of uh, $25 per day shall be imposed for each day thereafter that the respondent remains in violation of said code section. Second. Any board discussion on this? Um, Bobby, if you do a roll call, please. Dad? Yes. Mr. Plunkett? Yes. Mr. Polinsky? Yes. Mr. Moses? Yes. Ms. Archer? Yes. Mr. Casey? Yes. Mr. Santana? Yes. Okay. Motion carries. Appreciate your honesty, Mr. Haas. Thank you. Um, 1418 Fox Run Drive. Sir, if I could have you please state your name and the microphone and your address for the records. Uh, Thomas D. Archangelo, 1418 Fox Run Drive. Thank you, Mr. D. Archangelo. My name is Cindy Sander, Code Enforcement Inspector. We're going to have Mr. D'Archangelo approve some photos. This is case 13-8000224. The property address is 1418 Fox Run Drive, and the property owner of record is Thomas D'Archangelo, Jr. This is a repeat by a later. The original case was 08-8000111. Um, dated August 18, 2008. On March 4, 2013, while investigating a complaint across the street from this property, I noticed that there was a vehicle with an expired tag and two flat tires parked on the grassy right-of-way in front of this house. 
um, the property owner came out and I told, I gave him a verbal warning as he promised to have the vehicle brought into compliance immediately. At that point, I could have issued a notice of hearing, but I was giving the gentleman a benefit of the doubt. On March 22nd, 2013, while conducting a reinspection across the street from this property, I noticed that the vehicle with an expired tag and two flat tires was still on the grassy right of way. This property was in violation of code 40.00, which is parking or storage of abandoned vehicles as a repeat violator. A notice of hearing was sent first via first class mail and certified return receipt on March 25th. I posted the property on March 27th and conducted a reinspection on the next day, March 28th, um, to find that the vehicle had a current tag and the tires were inflated. Um, an affidavit of compliance was issued. I conducted an inspection yesterday on April 10th. The vehicle was gone and the property is still in compliance. This property was in violation of code 40.00 from March 22nd, 2013 to March 28th of 2013 as a repeat violator. I'm recommending a $50 per day fine for those six days. Does the uh, board have any questions for Cindy, for the city? So we're just looking at a repeat violator, is that correct? Yes. And you um, actually did give a verbal warning where it had I gave him the benefit of the doubt for two weeks. Yeah. So had, that, had your warning been heeded, then we wouldn't be here. Correct. Okay. And he really, you know, I felt that he was going to keep his word on it. Um, I really expected the vehicle to be brought into compliance in a few days, which is why I didn't issue a notice of hearing right of way. Um, and I will do that with, in certain cases. Um, but it wasn't taken care of, so. Okay. Does the city have any witnesses? No, myself and my testimony. Okay. Mr. D'Arcangelo, would you like to make an opening statement? No, not really. Just, uh, I, fig I figured that when I went out and talked to her, it wasn't, I didn't think it was, uh, uh, I don't know how to explain it. I figured I would get something in the mail, but evidently I was being charged before I was notified. I know Cindy said it was a verbal violation or a verbal, she stated to me, we talked about my car basically, and I just didn't take it as a verbal warning, I guess. It was a mistake, I guess, on my part, so I mean, that's it, really. When, when it, let me explain something, Tom. Yes. When it's a, when you're, when you've been brought before code board previously mm -hmm. for the same code. I understand. Um, I understand. We don't have to give notice. When I go out and, and, and find that the, the code's been violated again, mm -hmm. a notice of hearing is immediately sent. I don't even have to come up to the door and, and say anything to, you know, to the violator. It's just, I go back to the office, we issue a notice of hearing, and it's mailed out. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's trying to... No, I know. I know. You told me that, too, on the phone. I, mean, I understand. You know um, I just didn't have the money, I guess. I don't know. I, I didn't take it as a verbal warning, though, too, so it was my fault. I mean, that's it. There's really nothing I could say about it. The car had no the guy, The car was expired and had flat tires. So, no, just not the money to fix it. Mr. D'Arcanzo, did you have any witnesses you wanted to bring forward? Okay. Does the uh, board have any other questions for Mr. D'Arcanzo? I have one question. Bobby, would you receive those photographs and evidence, please? Yes, sir. Uh, just like the other cases, uh, you did not have, it took you 18 days from March 4th to March 28th, and you just admitted that it was because of lack of funds for a new vehicle tag and tires. Uh, are you at a, not going into detail of uh, financial hardship to pay this fine? <sighs> We're talking not, a fine of about three hundred dollars. Yeah, not, not, not necessarily. I mean, I don't work. I take care of my mother. It's, it's difficult. It's difficult. I mean, I had to borrow the money to get it in compliance the next day. But uh, I, I knew. I even knew that I was not in compliance with the car out there. But I figured I would get something uh, in the mail. I guess 
So you're wanting to procrastinate being able to pay the uh, fees necessary. That's you guys. I mean, um, I'm looking, I've been looking for a job now for months. I mean, it's difficult, but I was not in compliance, so there's a fine to that, you know. Uh, okay. That's up to you guys, the, the actual due date uh, of the money. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. That's not a case in this case, though. <coughs> what, what we did with the other cases... No, there needed um, to be a due date for them oh. to come into compliance. You're in compliance. Yes, ma'am. So basically, if we hit you with this fine, mm -hmm. I think the city would be happy if you came in and gave them $25 a month. They just Because you are in compliance. Yes, ma'am. And so you just need to make an effort to pay. Okay. It will be paid. I mean, especially... I was not in compliance. I, I knew I wasn't. I was just expecting to get something... In the mail first, that's all. I don't know. Okay. My own uh, ignorance, I guess. Any other questions by the board? City, City, would you like to make a closing statement? Um, you can just, you know, if you don't like my recommendation, you can make another one. If I'm open to whatever you feel. Okay. L open to lowering the uh, daily fine amount. And Mr. D'Arcangelo, would you like to make a closing statement? No, um, <laughs> she's been amazing with me, actually. Uh, there's, there's nothing I can say. I don't even dispute my guilt, really. You know? She's been really good to me, so. Okay. All right. And this has been going on since 2008, did you mention? No, um, he was brought before code board in 2008 for um, a couple of vehicles that didn't have tags. All right, so at this point, I'm going to close the uh, public hearing portion of this, and, um, this case, and I'd like to have the board recommend a motion. I'll make one. Okay. Thank you. Well, let me ask you, uh, Mr. Chairman, can we have a discussion before the motion as to what our a consensus opinion as to what the fine might be if we don't necessarily take uh, Ms. Sainer's... Uh, uh, that would actually come after the motion. That would. All right, Chairman. Yeah. All right. Well, then, then I'll make the motion. Okay. Okay. I actually, Wanda had um, initially said to make a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I move based on the testimony, evidence, facts presented in law that the respondent was in violation of Section 40, 40 of the Tarpon Springs City Code of Ordinances from March 22nd the initial inspection date until compliance on March 28, uh, 2013. A fine of $25 per day for six days is imposed for a total fine of $150. Do we have a second? I second. Uh, board discussion? I think that's very generous part of my discussion. And if I may say, if this passes, you better not let this happen again. Yeah, I know. I know. I, yes. Like I said, it was my own ignorance. Uh, and Wanda cut the fine in half, and I think that's very Yeah, I think it's more than reasonable. That, in fact, I, I got a figure right here, which I had assumed six months at $25 a month. So I came up with the same figure. What was the day, Wanda? There's no, it's already in compliance. He's in compliance. No, there is no. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. Well, as I say, you know, if you can get it all together and bring it right now, great, but I think the city will take anything. <laughs> yeah, it's in compliance. There's no one. All right. Any other board discussion? Bobby, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Mrs. Dabbs? Yes. Mr. Plunkett? Yes. Mr. Slepsky? Yes. Mr. DeMosses? Yes. Mrs. Archer? Yes. Mr. Casey? Yes. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Um, Mr. Yes. Arcangelo, I appreciate you. your honesty. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. And um, now we're going to move to the affidavits of noncompliance. Are there any, is there anybody in the um, auditorium for um, North Avenue, vacant lot, parcel 182716, 9108004020? So we have a motion for the affidavits of noncompliance, please. 
move to accept the affidavit of non-compliance on case number 12-8000925. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I could have a motion for the affidavits of compliance. Please. I'll make that in the absence of Robin Dunn. Thank you, Al. Uh, I move to accept the affidavits of non-compliance. Of compliance? Of compliance. Yeah, I'm sorry, of compliance. Page 12, 8-0-0-0-0-9-0-1. Page 12-8-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-
No, um, I wasn't able to watch the video, and then I took it over to the library. It doesn't work there either. Oh, really? Okay, Bobby, can you get her another one, please? Maybe there's something wrong with that one. Yes, I came by. Mm -hmm. um, they say they were going to do, make a new one or something like that, okay. but I haven't gotten it yet. Okay. Did you want that in Yes, that would be fine. We all know that if you go on the Tarpon website that you can take a look at these proceedings. Also on television. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, I yeah, it usually takes a couple of days for the, um, the recording to hit the, the uh, computer for the city's website. But you can go, you know, when I first started taping these, you can go back and, and watch them. Do you have any questions about codes or just just to let new members know, I try to work with, with the public um, to avoid bringing them before you. Um, I do what I possibly can to get them to come into compliance. And when I can't, then they're brought before you. These are these are cases that people are just being stubborn and um, trust me and do everything I can to take compliance and it's all about compliance. I have a uh, comment I'd like to make about Cindy. I was happened to be in the barber shop the other day. Oh, you're not going to talk okay. about it. Okay. <laughs> I, I think it, no, I want to talk about this. I was in the barber shop the other day and Cindy got into a discussion with the, the lady in the barber shop as far as there were some compliance problems. And I, I thought, now, do I keep my mouth shut? And I said, I'm going to keep my mouth shut because the barber and a couple other people started, well, the city, dad, I only want money, blah, blah, blah. And Cindy just very professionally dealt with the, the, the lady at the desk uh, without going into too many details because you don't need to know what barber shop. But nonetheless, I ha and I complimented you when you brought over the, the uh, docket to my house. She completely... Uh, was so professional that when they when she walked out, not one I was expecting somebody to say, Well, that that no good, you know, SOB. They the wind was out of their sails. And basically they had to admit in the discussion in the barbershop, all the guys, they had to admit, one, well she really knows her stuff and two, well you can't really bitch about what she you know, if that's what the city's got, that's the city and I have to tell you, I was very, very impressed, and you, you may, never saw me sitting there. So. I never. I walked okay. in, and I have, I have tunnel vision when I well. come in, I, I, <laughs> and I don't like going into businesses during working hours. I really don't. But I, the reason was they had a oversized day frame for the longest time, and I finally said, okay, now I, I've got to stop in there. I had to get the address, number one. Number two, I had no idea what, what the name of the business was because there was no name outside. And I needed to be able to look up to see whether they had an occupational license or not, which they did not. So I went in, and there was the lady at the counter, and I told her, I said, you know, can I see a copy of your Tarpon occupational license? Well, it was dated 2007. She was under the impression she only needed to do it up, you know, once. Um, said she never got any, you know, renewal notices and whatnot. So, um, but I never saw... Um, Carl, <laughs> had I saw him, I probably would have hurried back out. But. Well, I just wanted everybody to know that I was an innocent wit witness at how professionally you handled yourself. And it, as I say, it diffused. You, you, you don't realize you walk into a men's barber shop and there's seven or eight guys there, and then you handle yourself and you walk out. You'd expect somebody to be bitching about what you had to say and all. And they started to discuss it, and I'm thinking, now, do I defend her? Do I open my my, my mouth? Do I just go? Do I just leave? And I just I just listened. And by the time they were done, they had come to the realization: one, they were lucky that they had gotten away with it, maybe for a few years without paying for the license, and two, that they couldn't say, well, you can't say anything about the, you know. And the guy said to the lady at the desk, happened to be his wife, said, was, was she was she all right with you? And she said, yeah, don't, don't, don't get excited. She was 100% professional. So I just wanted a compliment. And I, I wanted everybody else to, to know that, that what I witnessed. So Thank you. You're welcome. Can I have a raise now? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know about a raise, but, but, but you should get, you were, you were very professional. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Mr. Chairman, yeah. may I address Cindy on something? Cindy, yes, have sir. we rescinded the 
outside sandwich signs in this city? Unfortunately not. No, we haven't. Okay. No, they can still have an apron. What on. about solicitation on these sponge docks with people handing out? They're not allowed to unless they're standing in front of their own restaurant or place of business. Okay. Thank you. That's all I want to say. Any other comments? And I will tell you that when businesses happen down there, there's no complaints. And when they're slow down at the docks, we get complaints. So. Okay. okay. Could I? This has nothing to do with code enforcement, but I, some of you know, I'm um, a volunteer for Labrador Retriever Rescue of Florida, and I went on a website last week and found shelters in Florida only. And I counted over 50 labs that were in kill shelters, and their time was limited. And the reason we can't pull them out is because we need foster homes. So if anybody would be interested in fostering a lab, because we a lab because we they are in foster homes, we need foster homes. These beautiful dogs and, and, and any rescue group. If if you already have a dog, it's really not much harder to get two bowls of food out or take two dogs out. And if money, you know, food is a problem, we get food donated. We could provide the food for you. It doesn't cost anything else. The vets are all paid for by lab rescue. And they're such good dogs. They're such good the dogs. Awesome. They're probably about the best you yeah. can have. A... I've got a girl right now that somebody's coming this afternoon to look at. Wanda, do you have any other than puppies? Oh, you don't have to take a puppy. I have fostered a couple puppies. I've been in it two years, and I've fostered over 25 dogs. Yeah. And it's awesome. We took it's a puppy. It's so cool to see them go to their new home. We took a puppy. It drive my wife crazy. Oh, uh, no. And the thing is, if you, you know, we've got people that want to take the puppies, and their houses are set up for it. But I, besides the two puppies that I did foster, um, the dogs I fostered all come to my house, and they already are housebroken. Um, we'll provide a cage. Um, it's kind of nice to make sure that they know they can go in a crate. Um, I crate my dogs always the first night, but from then on, they're in a bed with me. <laughs> so, and, but they're great dogs, and they're so smart. So if you know, if you could make room in your heart, in your house, and foster a dog, we could get those dogs out of the shelter. And there's no such thing as no kill shelters. I hate that. That's awesome. That's probably close to your heart, isn't it, Becky? Wanda, what's your phone number? I'll give you a card. Okay. Um, on the website, uh, it tells how to volunteer, and you just throw it out, and somebody will do a home visit, and you can have a dog, and the next day, it's great. We just got one, but I... We might want to I'll take a look. Any other board comments? Thank you. Great website shows all the dogs. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Wanda. Thank you. And uh, it looks like, uh, what is it, uh, 3.37. This will conclude our board meeting. Thank you very much. This is